Okay, live on air, I think. So let's get this show on the road, shall we? <clears throat> I'll just get my um, uh, chat to pop out. I think it's working. Uh, there's always a delay, so maybe. Um, yeah, okay, we're live, so I think if I pop out the chat so I can keep track of anyone who comes in to say hello. Um, and in the meantime, hey, welcome. If you're uh, watching this, you're one of the special people. You're just watching it back later. So, you know, the, the that, that stuff, most people missed. Um, but now people start arriving in the live chat. Hi, philosopher, how are you going? So, uh, a happening thing here. I know, what is it, Thursday night? Thursday night, excuse me to have a drink. Someone coming in the kitchen, you can do that. I'm just over here. You can never tell if it's just the door, wind or um, someone's actually coming in. But it's someone coming in. That's okay. Hey there, Greg. How's it going? Um, we're having a Matrix night in the next room. Uh, but, um, uh, and while I am a fan of Matrix, we're going to watch some of the Animatrix and... Uh, having watched uh, the original Matrix, they're going to watch Matrix Reloaded, which I think is an unfairly maligned movie. Just probably because the the Matrix seemed so new and amazing, um, a lot of people were down on the sequels in a way that I think is unfair because I think they're actually quite good. Um, and uh, not least, I did really enjoy the battle scenes in um, both sequels, but um, yeah, it's a, a thing, I guess. Um, um, you know, people usually and usually rightly say sequels aren't as good as the original, <clears throat> and it's very rare that uh, a sequel outshines uh, the original. Man, one, one, one that occurs to me that does is Mad Max. Um, while I am a fan of the original Mad Max movie with young and sexy Mel Gibson in it, <clears throat> Mad Max 2 was amazing, known as the uh, Road Warrior in North America. Uh, it was just called Mad Max 2 in Australia. Um, and it, it took stuff to a whole new place. But then even to go beyond that, uh, like, you know, the bloody 40 years later sequel, Fury Road, is absolutely astonishing. Um, it's like, okay, the the early reports of the Blade Runner sequel are not positive. I haven't seen it yet. But um, the early reports of Blade Runner 2049 are positive. And that would be an against the odd odds uh, success that was successful in my book um, because, again, you know, a, a 30, 40 year later sequel, what are the chances of it being any good? You'd have to say not very high, um, but it seems to be being well received. And I mean, Mad Max Fury Road leaves the other Mad Max films in the dirt. And this is speaking as someone who was a fan of the uh, uh, original uh, Mad Max films. I was really to watch Mad Max 2 so many times. Um, and uh, it was just, just an auto film. Okay, I'm just going to do some link sharing uh, while we're talking here. I'll do it. I'll just type this in. Uh, ooh, what do we give it? What are, what are these neat new backgrounds? Uh, mm, that one, maybe it's pretty. Uh, do a photo. Uh, okay, so that's 
Facebook sorted, or do the, the Twitter thing, telling the peoples. <laughs> One of the weird things, like you open Twitter sometimes, you randomly get something really weird, and someone's just tweeted, chucked out of a coronial inquest yet again for bellowing about how good fats and how they will save us all. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's as the kids say, random. Okay, um, a double check. Okay, it did actually tweet my session out, so that's good. That's done. Uh, so I'm on the Facebook and I'm on uh, the Twitter and. Hopefully, YouTube is sending out um, notifications. It doesn't always, or it doesn't always in any sort of prompt way. But, um, you know, uh, we will give it a go. Ah, oh, musical aviator. Oh, I'm very flattered you chose me over computer games. That is, that is very nice. Thank you very much. Ah. I will try to make it worth your while. I got two packages from Toby. Toby, who's been sending all the fun religious tracts and whatnot. That's a lot. These are pretty big parcels. Um, so I'll, I'll wait till there's a, a, f a few more people. And hopefully Toby will join, actually. It'd be nice to have him on while I open them. Uh, so I'll be opening those a bit later. Um, uh, but um, that's, that's something fun for us all to look at. Uh, we'll, we'll see what sort of religious tracts we have and uh, what sort of religious insights we can uh, gain and, and perchance save our souls, if not our lives. You know, our immortal souls are worth much more. Very funny when you think about religion. It has to tread a really fine line because the whole thing about if you're good, uh, uh, when you die, you go to the afterlife, you go to be in God's presence, and it's the most wonderful thing ever. Well, it's not that wonderful. You're not allowed to kill yourself. If you kill yourself just to get to God, that's the worst thing ever. So you can't do that. That's the thing you can't do. You, we, we tell you that being dead is better than being alive, uh, but you can't be dead on purpose, okay? Even if you have a miserable, shitty life, um, grinding poverty, disease, hardship, uh, and some preacher sits there telling you about the glory of the afterlife, you're not allowed to want it, okay? You're not allowed to want to be dead. You're not allowed to accelerate the process. You're not allowed to kill yourself. So, um, yeah, you gotta, um, you got to make the afterlife sound so good that people will want to do good things in their life to earn passage to the afterlife, but not so good that people can't resist rushing to get there. And, of course, that doesn't always work, does it? Particularly, history is riddled with people uh, uh, murdering others like their family or, or, or cults encouraging suicide to go to a higher plane. It's once you start with this bullshit about higher planes and um, greater rewards and the wonderful afterlife, uh, the next plane of existence, um, and, you know, then you get people trying to get there in a hurry. You, you just can't get around it. Hey, Toby. How you going? Look what I got, buddy. Look at this. Ooh, I got your packages. That's a pretty awesome package. Might might wait for a few more people. Well, I'm glad you're here, though. I was, was hoping you were going to be here. Because um, it's only fair that you're here while I open them. So they'll be coming later. Uh, and, and we'll just chat. We'll, we'll just chat in the meantime. But, oh, my God. <laughs> Matrix movie playing. I'm not. I'm not sure if Mark Fan's picking any of it up. The Matrix movie playing in the next room, and it's like, 
uh, it's, it's the computer animated short they released prior to the sequel called Last Flight of the Osiris. And it's just like all the machine guns firing at the squiddy things. And so there's an enormous amount of noise coming from the next room of big dramatic orchestral music and shooty shooty. Um, uh, it's pretty intense. I actually, um, I went to see a movie that was an adaptation of a Stephen King story. And this was not a hugely successful movie. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Um, there's these guys who grew up as childhood friends and they all had gifts, some sort of psychic gift. And then there's aliens who start possessing people. Um, and one guy is like a mind castle. You can hide in his own mind to stop the aliens from taking over him. Uh, and uh, the, um, oh God, what was that movie called? I can't remember. But anyway, that was on. And as a, uh, an opener for that, and they advertised this, that um, I'll go and see this movie, Dreamcatcher. The movie was called Dreamcatcher. Um, go see Dreamcatcher. And as a bonus, you get a tra like a trailer, you get a, you know, a full uh, short animation of, uh, it's like a prequel to the sequel to The Matrix called Last Flight of the Stars. So I went and saw uh, Dreamcatcher just to see this short. And the short was better than Dream. I know I've seen some who, who quite like the movie Dreamcatcher. It wasn't terrible, but um, it wasn't great. So hey there, Patman Sport and Harry Nick. Glad to see you. So Toby, well, okay, pocket size, New and Old Testament, Doctrine and Covenants, Pearls of Great Price, Mormon Scriptures. Well, okay, I've got to admit, looking forward to uh, the Doctrines and Covenants and Pearls of Great Price from our good friends, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Do I think they like saving three people? That's, that's interesting. In ter in philosopher, do you mean in general or in terms of people um, joining this live stream? Um, because possibly yes to both, because for people outside of Australia, this is an hour different to when I used to do it. Um, so trying to remember, oh boy, I've got my handy dandy world clock function here on my phone. Um, let's see, what time is it around the world? Oh my God, okay, so it's like, 8.30 p.m. here, uh, 2.30 a.m. in Los Angeles, 5.30 a.m. in New York. Okay, so I say people used to join at like the 6 a.m. in the States, so it's an hour earlier. So that probably is putting off people in the States. And it's the middle of the morning in London, 10.28 a.m. Um, yeah, that is actually interesting that uh, may be having an effect on people joining a live stream. That's okay. These are things you discover and work out. 7.30 p.m. for you, Patman Sport. Oh, uh, yeah, musical AV. I'm actually a fan of daylight saving, particularly once you're well and truly into uh, summer. Um, I like coming home from work and there still being... Uh, hours of sunlight um and uh wait a second, i just have to massage something to okay that's the just a little photo um batman sport you're one hour behind in queensland one hour and three decades hey 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 wow yeah, Toby, thinking about the prohibition on tobacco and alcohol, um, for someone who was just a blatant con man like Joseph Smith, I find that Puritan streak of Mormonism really odd. I mean, we clearly got what Joseph Smith was about when he went for polygamy, like multiple wives and very young wives. Um, his whole thing was clearly... Uh, 
a combination money making scam and shagging lots of women scam. But the, the Puritan aspect of the no alcohol, coffee, uh, tobacco, I find odd. It's like, man, because if you're really just trying to suck people in to your religion, you, you, I don't know, you want to make it a bit more fun, I think. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, because there were lots, maybe you had to be Puritan to fit in. Maybe that was it. Uh, uh, maybe if you were a bit more freewheeling, no one would have gone along with it. No one would have uh, signed up because they actually wanted a Puritan religion. They wanted um, Puritan way of thinking about things. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how people's minds work. Who knows? Who knows how people's minds work? So you just you know roll with it, really. Um, yeah, so, um, what do I know? What do I know about religion? Nothing. I don't, I don't know what appeals to the religion front, you know, it, it, it could be anything. So I'm not sure what it looks like. Sorry, I just saw some comments saying read my address. I don't know what that means. Me and my postal address. But that's the thing. Oh. Yeah, Toby. I'm, I, I, I don't get how Puritan things were. I, I, okay, there are, there are people who just are very Puritan. And actually, in and of itself, I don't have any problem at all. If, if someone uh wanted to uh abstain from you know alcohol drugs stimulants whatever uh, uh that's fine um but uh I, I i don't really get the appeal myself lugi what happened on blog tv well the um site ceased to exist someone else brought it out i think it might have been you now I don't know, and then they freaking killed it and it didn't work. So I I stopped doing live streams for ages. Um, uh, and then YouTube uh, made it easy for a while, then they made it hard, and now they've made it easier again. So, so you know, I stream live stream. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I think of trying the other ones, like, uh, you know, Twitch or whatever. Maybe I'd get randoms if I went on Twitch. I don't know. Philosopher, don't they have a huge health thing? I'm not sure what you mean. Do they have a good health thing or a bad health thing? I mean, I imagine if you abstain from alcohol and drugs and tobacco and stimulants, you would be healthy. Logic would suggest... Logic would suggest that um, you'd be healthy, um, but I don't know. I don't know if there's any like evidence that Mormons are uh, healthier than average. Um, I've I've not looked into it. So it could be, yeah. See, Batman. Hopefully, good randos. But I think Twitch being a gaming platform. There'd, there'd be a lot of bad randos as well. Um, you never tell. But, um, hey, Toby, how long are you able to uh, hang out tonight? Because I've, I've obviously got to open the mail before you have to leave. Mormons do have a huge thing for health. So, Toby, you mean the Mormons promote health, like they promote a healthy lifestyle? They think, who? Bodies a temple and all that sort of shenanigans? Um yeah, because that's a reasonable thing to do. As the uh, uh, old saying goes, my body's a temple. One of those collapsed ruins that you see that tourists like to visit. 
you know, it's just falling around and it's got mould growing everywhere and monkeys live in it. That's my body. Hey, Joe, Will, good to see you, buddy. <laughs> but, you know, temples and temples. Although I am working on uh, getting the old body into uh, working order. Well, the bottle's on top of my fridge. I'm going to go, look, well, okay, that's just um, tonic water. Um, but, like, that's, that's my tequila. Th those, are, those are my concoctions. Um, I'm having a concoction. This is like a homemade fireball. I um, uh, Wait, which one's this? This might be the tequila. I, I lose track. But I, I, I had some uh, chili, um, what do you call it, uh, rock candy. And I like to dissolve that in yon alcohols. Uh, it goes well in tequila. And as I found out, no, this bourbon, I'm sure I sniffed it before. Now I've diluted it now. Yeah, I can't really smell the alcohol anymore. This is um, bourbon with um, chili rock candy and it's so yeah, like a fireball whiskey, homemade style. It's really tasty. Um, I, I did try a little bit of it uh, straight. Um, and um, it's it's really strong, straight the chili aspect. Diluted, it's actually super super tasty. Joe, yes, it's not it's not a problem for me. The drinking, um, I'm I'm able to you know keep drinking with no problem. Oh, Pat, has there been any more iterations of video, dude? He's in jail and getting beaten up in jail for being a dick, apparently. So. Um, Okay, Toby. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna open the mail. Toby sent me um, some stuff for us to consider on the live stream. So, ah, what do we got here? Okay, first up, and also I've got to send Toby something. Here. Ooh, what's this? What's this? Oh. Okay, got a little letter from Toby. I'm. I'm just gonna read it. Hope you like the goodies I sent you this time. Hope you enjoy them, even if the enjoyment comes from uh, adding to your brain collection of religious literature. This package has sent you Awake and Watchtower magazines, some pamphlets on Islam, other tracks from Jehovah's Witnesses, Bible pamphlet got from the Mormons, which they give you when you investigate the church, copy of the Doctrines and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price, pocket size, pocket size King James New and Old Testament. This is like, this is everything. I mean, yeah, this is everything. So, yes. Uh, Luvi, yes, is he still breathing. Hopefully he'll come around on the weekend. He's been less than 100% lately, but we might see him. Who knows? Just before starting this paragraph, went to the website, ordered your books, pamphlets, CDs, and DVDs from the website, islamaustralia.com. Okay. Oh, wow. So um, I'm getting a bunch of stuff from the Islam Australia site and probably getting on a terrorist watch list too. Toby, the two of us, we're going to be on a watch list. Um. Okay, so they're in Victoria. Toby's new, so I might get them first. Okay, hope you're enjoying the things I'm sending you. I am, Toby. It is very good to have these things. If you know, please let me know. I'll stop sending them to you. I should mention I'm an atheist. I think religion is the biggest con job that our species has ever unleashed on the world. These places claim to be God, but I don't think they're telling the truth. I think at best, people claim to be prophet, at least mentally ill, just seeing and hearing a bunch of shit in their heads. At worst, like case of Joseph Smith Jr., founder of Mormonism, I think it's a simple case. He's out for money, power, and sex. Hope you can see Joseph Smith's bullshit, the Doctrines and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I think we'll have a bit of fun reading this, actually. Should explain something about DNC, which I refer from here and there, because can't be fuck typing the whole thing out. Fair. DNC is split into sections, which are chapters, even further into verse, like the Bible. Pocket size New and Old Testament, DNC, Pearl of Great Price, be a paragraph beginning of each book, chapter explaining the basic outline, prohibition on consumption of alcohol, tea, coffee, tobacco, found in section 89 of the DNC. Use that paragraph there on section and learn to see where the prohibition is. Okay. So I want to send a letter. Wishes of health to AZ, our the viewers, and Viola. Hope you like what I sent you. I do like it. Thank you. Get you a Book of Mormon at some point. So you get all four books of script of Mormon church. Get it free from the local Mormon missionaries. Get a copy. Never have to speak to them ever again. <laughs> Should finish letter up. Otherwise, it might keep babbling on. Have nothing. Best to you, angry family, AZ, Viola. Thanks, Toby. That's really cool. So, literature. Ooh, okay. I'm actually... Like, okay, whoa, this is a nice one. It's like, dude, who woke me up? Plan of Salvation. Who's this? Oh, this is Mormons, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Little summary. 
God's plan is so. Oh, look, look, look at this picture. Look, kids about to face plan. Mum's going, oh, I got you. And dad's there going, oh, I haven't got anyone. He's not, he's not getting anyone. He's not catching anyone. He's just sort of, uh, uh, that's not going to do it. Look at this. Okay, this is, okay, there's a little passage here about um, Adam and Eve, and this is from the Book of Mormon. Um, if Adam had not transgressed, he would not have fallen, would have remained in the Garden of Eden, and Adam and Eve would have had no children, wherefore they had remained in a state of innocence, having no joy, for they knew their misery, doing no good, for they knew no sin. But behold, all things that have been done in the wisdom of him who knoweth all things, Adam felt that men might be, and men are, they might have joy. That, 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 that's the thing, right? Uh, the whole sort of, oh, Ab, Adam and Eve would have just stayed in the Garden of Eden uh, and there would have been, you know, no, oh, like bullshit. It was like God's plan all along. God's a bastard. Hello, Screever. How are you? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm, I'm, I'm with everyone that r religion generally is stupid. But I tend to not go out of uh, my way to upset people like, you know, putting beacon on the crown. Oh, my God. There was this one dude on YouTube. This is years ago. This is really old school. This is before atheists on the Internet um, became complete assholes. Um, this guy, he was just a, a thing. And I, I, I thought he was pillars. But, um, you know, he was you know, saying he's rejecting Islam and he's not scared of the threats or whatnot, um, he actually put uh, Quran in the toilet and took a huge shit on it and posted a picture of that on YouTube. And then he was upset when YouTube took the video down. Uh, it's like, oh, 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 it's censorship. It's like, dude, on what world do you think? YouTube is going to let a video of your shit stay up. And it doesn't matter what you took a shit on, whether it was the Quran or the Bible or, or a newspaper or magazine or even just a shit in a toilet bowl. You post a video of your shit on YouTube, it's getting taken down. Um, it was really weird watching this guy who apparently sincerely did not understand why his video got taken down because he thought it was free speech it was like dude it was a shit okay now this th this one caught my eye uh, toby sent me um human rights and islam because honestly the islamic countries in the world today do not have a good record with human rights, like, you know, Saudi Arabia beheading people, stoning people, cutting people's hands off. Um, yes, yes, a little. Yeah, see, this this is why, uh, you know, poor bloody Muslims, because I know a lot of Muslims um, and, uh, you know, good people, like I know a lot of Christians, and good people, Jewish people, good people, but, you know, when you're trying to say, trying to gloss over uh, the evil that is done in the name of your religion, you, you're pushing shit uphill, quite honestly. Like this little one sticks out, freedom of belief. Contrary to popular misconceptions, a genuine Islamic republic is obligated to not only permit, but respect diversity. Thus, non-Muslims within an Islamic territory are allowed to worship in accordance with their religion. There are many examples of this historically. And look, there are examples of this today as well. There were examples of, like in Egypt, when there was a few um, uh, Christian Egyptians uh, protecting and supporting uh, Muslim Egyptians and vice versa. Um, but also in basically every Muslim country in the world, um, there are people being murdered for the sole fact they're not Muslim. And it's impossible to get away from that. You know, it's not like other religions can hold their head up. Um, 
Is Israel's not a bloody beacon of tolerance. And even in the US, you get people who feel completely justified, completely justified in persecuting, attacking, and even killing people because they're not Christians. Uh, and, you know, it's not like any of the religions can particularly uh, hold their head up. It's just um, Islam is front and centre at the moment in that uh, bad things are happening on a large scale. It's still uh, a, a tiny minority of the people practising the religion is the problem. Um, I'm not a fan of uh, what goes on in Muslim states. Uh, the various countries around the world controlled uh, the government is Muslim. I'm not a fan, whether you're talking Saudi Arabia, the other Emirates states, Pakistan, uh, even bloody uh, Indonesia to the north of Australia, which just doesn't tend to have all the excesses of some of the Middle Eastern countries, but there's still some bullshit goes on. So here's, so here's an interesting one on the hijab. So this is modesty, the clothing. Um, and this is really interesting because I think uh, the whole modesty in the name of religion, whatever religion's preaching it, it's all kinds of bullshit. Hey, Aussie Gun Bunny, how you going? Um, <laughs> spouted any good conspiracy theories lately, buddy? I know, look, I was really harsh on Twitter, but I fucking hate conspiracy theories. Uh, and I really don't have any tolerance for them. Hey, Biori, how's it going? So here's the thing. Um, I feel lucky to have from my, because um, I had a, a blog before I had a YouTube channel, and just by sheer random chance, I came across some uh, blogs written by Muslim women, and they told me a lot. They educated me a lot. Like, these are really educated together Muslim women. And it's like, okay, how do you cope? Uh, and these were from different countries, uh, uh, somewhere in the Middle East, uh, somewhere like in the UK and somewhere in the Southeast Asia. And uh, Aussie Gun Bunny, the sheriff, oh, okay. <laughs> Here's the thing, you, if anyone spouts conspiracy theories about that cunt in Las Vegas who shot all those people, I have zero tolerance. Uh, I, look, I did see some reference to the sheriff in Las Vegas saying something very general about he thinks the guy may have had help. Uh, I don't know in what context he thinks that. i tell you who his accomplice is. His accomplice is um, the fucking gun shops who sold him the guns. It's, it's kind of like... We had no indication he was crazy. Buying more than a dozen high-powered weapons is a clear sign you're fucking crazy, okay? It's one of those things where it's like the people who most want something are the people who really shouldn't have it. Um, it's like people who, hoons, who want huge overpowered cars. It's not the cars that are at fault. But the fuckwits who want them are the exact people who shouldn't be allowed to have them. And whenever there's a violent dog attack, right, people say, oh, don't pick on that uh, breed of dog. It's not the dog, it's the owner. Y yeah, but that breed of dog attracts colossal fuckwits as owners. And <laughs> it's just like the people who most want certain things uh, shouldn't have them. In a lot of cases, see, Aussie gun bunny. It depends what you mean by help. Okay, genuine question, absolute genuine question. When you say he had help, in what context do you think he had help? Um, uh, it's because. I don't know if they've established it completely yet, but I'm going to go out on a limb and assume he bought every weapon he had legally because there's no barriers to him getting it. 
I, I don't think that's a thing where he needs help to get, he doesn't need help to get the weapons. Um, I, I, I'll be surprised if he didn't get them all legally. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, but, you know, there's help and then there's help. I mean, are you suggesting that somebody was integrally involved in his attack, knew what his attack was going to be, actively supported? I mean, look, like if anyone else went into his room, that will come out on surveillance footage. If anyone else helped him carry weapons in, that will come out in surveillance footage. Catch reflection, I will be 100% down with you there. This rush, it particularly happens in America, but it happens around the world when there's some extreme violent action. People start going about, oh, mental illness, mental health. No, fuck no. In, term, in terms of an actual mental health issue, most people with mental health issues don't hurt anyone else. Um, they just don't. Um, and to, to say these acts of mass violence are just because of mental health is absolute bullshit. Aussie Gun Bunny, I'm absolutely with you. Um, wait, wait for an investigation to be concluded. But you see, when there are already absolutely deranged conspiracy theories with people saying, you know, it's it's staged con job to take our guns away. Oh no, he's definitely got some Muslim connection somewhere. Oh no, it's definitely it was Antifa who were in there, and it's just like people are saying the most ridiculous, moronic shit so forgive me if i snap and go no do not indulge in uh conspiracy theories that is sick and wrong oh pure yeah i, I saw people making that reference uh, uh you want gun control if every adult black male in america went out and bought an ar-15 there'd be gun control legislation within the week as the inconsistency of that whole thing in the US does my head in. Uh, so, Lugie, I don't think there are metal detectors in the hotel. I, I, it's no big deal. He just brought them in in suitcases. Uh, I don't know what hotels you've been in. I don't think he passed through any metal detectors. You imagine the scene that would cause in Las Vegas if you had metal detectors at hotels and if they went off, you start, there's someone wanted to start patting people down uh, or going through their luggage. Uh, that's, that's just not a thing in my book. Yeah, gun bunny. I, I look. I'm, I'm, I'm with it. It's like, it's, it's like help and help and, and be very cautious. You, you said a receipt got leaked. Um, no, no. The chance of that being completely untrue is about ninety nine percent. But, but again, room service for two. Man, maybe he's just a hungry guy. Maybe it's like a last week. You didn't see how much I just ate for dinner, okay? You could argue I had dinner for two tonight. So, um, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's over for conjecture, but, I mean, I would, uh, yeah, I, I mean, you know, you never know. It's kind of like, okay, but you're, you're talking about help. Like when Timothy McVeigh was convicted of the Oklahoma City bomb bombings, he didn't work alone, but they had to focus their prosecution on him because if, it's, if blame started getting split among different people, 
it could cast doubts on the case against McVeigh and he could get off. So they just decided, no, it's him because we want this motherfucker gone. And that's what they, rightly or wrongly, that's what they did. Um, it's kind of like there's a serial killer in Australia, uh, the notoriously Ivan Malat was kidnapping and murdering uh, um, uh, backpackers. And there's no way it was just him. Like his whole fucking family is crazy. Um, but the police did the same thing. If we start indulging in this thing that, you know, his brother's responsible for some of the murders, his l lawyers will try the reasonable doubt thing. Uh, and there'd be a danger of him uh, getting off. And so they just focused the prosecution on him, um, rightly or wrongly, let me see. Oh, Joe, you want the, the real conspiracy theories, as in conspiracies that actually happened? I mean, I mean, what are the big ones? I, ah, uh, actually, fucking, we're talking about crazy religions and cults. The Scientology one, how the Scientologists actually, oh, try that again, actually infiltrated government and the US taxation office to get dirt on everyone who was blocking them getting tax exempt status and try and ruin their lives. I've, look, I've got some fun stuff to read here. The hijab is saying, you know, modesty. See, I think, and I've met Muslim woman, they actually um, uh, want to with Egypt. I think the idea of forcing anyone <clears throat> is terrible and should be criminal. But you do get intelligent, educated Muslim women who do actually go with the whole modesty thing. I don't get it myself, but they do. Okay, KK's last smile. Oh, yes, Brits and Princess Di. Well, I don't know that everyone's obsessed with Princess Di conspiracies, but Jesus, old uh, Dodi Fayed is, is. Wait, Dodi was the one who died? What's his dad's name? Am I getting them mixed up? Got to head off at night. There we go. Worship in Islam. Islam explained. Concept of God in Islam. Ooh, this could be inflammatory. Women in Islam. Jesus in Islam. Muhammad, the final prophet of God. The sanctity of life, the Islamic position on terrorism. Again, it's perfectly um, straightforward for Muslims to go, no, 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 no. You, you look here in the Quran, here's where it says, don't kill people, don't kill people. Bad, bad. Um, uh, but there's a whole bunch of other people who find it really easy to justify uh, terrorism in the name of Islam. Ooh, the month of fasting, Ramadan. Reasons I could never be Muslim, Ramadan. And no bacon and no alcohol. No. Quran, the word of God. Ooh, understanding Sharia. Because that's that's the other big boogeyman anti-Muslim uh, say things. Keiko, it's exactly um, what you say. Feminists saying hijabs can't be feminist. But yeah, taking other women's rights away? How's that feminist? This, to me, it's a really simple line. If a, a, a Muslim woman genuinely wants to wear some form of covering, uh, hey, okay, go for it. I don't get it myself, but go for it. But anyone who tries to force it on them, particularly with threats or violence, fuck that, they should be in jail. Oh my God, this is surreal. Oh, look, this is another questions young people ask. Who puts this one out? Worldwide Bible Education Week. Ask the Watchtower. This is, that's the um, Jehovah's Witnesses. Batman, thanks for dropping by. Um, I, I, it fell open on a page. A bullying quiz. Who wants to do a bullying quiz? Here's a bullying quiz. True or false, bullying has been around for thousands of years. 
That's an interesting one. Bullying has been around for years. The answer is true. Because, example, the Bible tells us of the Nephilim, a group whose name means those who cause others to fall down. Those who call others to fall down. That's, maybe they just sell alcohol. Maybe the Nephilim just sell alcohol. And that's how they get people to fall down. Oh, well. Oh, true or false for number two. Bullying is just harmless teasing. It's not that serious. This is a tough quiz. This is a tough quiz. The answer is false. Bullying is a contributing factor in a large number of youth suicides. Number three, the best way to stop a bully is to fight back. The answer is apparently false. Bullies are often physically stronger than their victims, so attempts at retaliation are futile. Um, number four, if you witness bullying, it's best to ignore it. And the big answer there is false. In this case, there's no such thing as an innocent bystander. If you see bullying and don't say anything, you may be part of the problem rather than part of the solution. Mm. And five, beneath the boastful talks, bullies are often insecure. True. Although some bullies have a big ego, many are insecure and put others down to make themselves feel better. Well, and our final bully quiz question, bullies can change. True, with help, bullies can change the way they think and act. Ooh, gosh. How can I resist peer pressure? Just do what the cool kids want, you little wuss. Yeah, I think we all agree bullies suck balls, as much as I'm making fun of the watchtower. Resist peer pressure. Your peers just want you to do cool things. How do I deal with the pressure to have sex? You give in, okay? Sex is awesome. You should do it. Don't, unless you want to. If you want to, do it, you know. Biori, I'm not sure that there's anyone who hasn't done something bullyish. I was never a full blown bully, but I did some shit things to people. So, oh my gosh. Okay, I found something I really, really like here now. Should I believe in evolution? Okay, who, who wants to go with a spoiler alert? What? Do the Jehovah's Witnesses think about should we believe in re uh, evolution? Oh, why it matters. Here we go. If evolution's true, life has no lasting purpose. If creation is true, we can find satisfying answers to questions about life in the future. That makes no sense at all. It means the opposite is true. If evol evolution is true, life has a purpose. Life has a purpose of extending life and moving things forward and nothing stands still. Evolution is the purpose of life. This is dumb. Imagine this scenario though. Alex is confused. He's always believed in God in creation, but today his biology teacher forcefully claimed that evolution is a fact that it's based on credible scientific research. Alex doesn't want to appear foolish. After all, he says to himself, if scientists have proved evolution is true, who am I to question them? Damn fucking straight, Alex, quite honestly. If you were Alex, would you accept evolution just because textbooks present it as fact? Stop and think. People on both sides of the debate are often quick to state what they believe without really knowing why they believe it. Some people believe in creation simply because it's what they've been taught at church. Some people believe in evolution simply because it's what they've been taught in school. Ms. Eric and Biori is suggesting a podcast, The Thinking Atheist. That's nice. Um, so, except... Uh, Mm, I don't listen to podcasts, like, ever. 
I know that makes me weird in this day and age, but if I'm on public transport, I'm usually reading. Um, and yeah, I'm never sitting still long enough to do, I'm watching TV if I'm sitting still. Hi hey, Mel, how's it going? Um, I, but thank you for the recommendation, but generally I don't listen to podcasts. And by generally, I mean ever. Oh, here you go. A claim. Everything in the universe came as a result of the Big Bang. Who or what caused the Big Bang? Well, it's the same thing. Who or what caused God? Which makes more sense? That everything came from nothing or everyone came from someone? Who does someone come from, you fucking knuckles? Claim. Humans evolved from animals. If humans evolved from animals, apes, for example, why is there such a huge gap between the intellectual capacity of humans and those apes? Because of their different evolutionary paths. Answered. Why are even the most basic forms of life so incredibly complex? Well, the most basic forms of life are single cells. That's not very complex. But this, and here, here is the thing. And I, oh, oh, excuse me, I gen, generally, I generally, I can understand how people, so when you look at the, amazing complexity of life when you see uh, amazing plants and the diversity and amazing animals stop Whoa. no no see, my hair is actually a bit thinner there um but um if, if if i brushed my hair across instead of straight up i wouldn't be as noticeable um so um i i can kind of understand when someone sees incredibly complex rare things they go no, that can't be random. It's like, no, dude, you just don't understand. And it's also, we're also talking about development over billions of years, tiny bit at a time. Um, it's when you stop questioning that I have a problem. So uh, the <laughs> there was an awesome documentary I watched a while ago. It was um, Stephen Hawking's explaining uh, the universe. And he did explain things like, the Big Bang, and he's going on the big question, um, how something could be, come from nothing. And is he was dealing with some of the really advanced theories in quantum physics and whatnot about how it, there's now a belief that there's a cycle of expansion and collapse that just keeps happening forever, and everything collapses down to one point and then the incredible pressure and heat again causes an explosion, the Big Bang and everything accelerates outwards. Um, and it was very interesting having him explain things like the Big Bang and um, how life could have come from just chemicals. Uh, it's very interesting, because <laughs> there was always this subtext in it and I kept having the giggles because it was like, you don't need God to know that. And there's, there's this subtext in the whole thing like, your religion is stupid, okay? Here's the actual truth, you morons. Uh, your religion is dumb. Ooh, a video idea. Then you sit and watch RWBY and record our reactions. I don't know what RWBY is, Loogie. What, what, what is that? Um, yeah, don't explain gravity. Like time, time is not, a, we all know humans tend to experience time in a linear fashion and so humans think that time is a straight line progression. But thinking people know time isn't a straight line. It's more of a wibbly wobbly tiny whiny thing everyone knows that look at wow wow i mean that's a pretty big claim listen to god and live forever who are the watchtower what does the bible say about life and death hmm. oh wait okay this way okay on one level this is this is the one about teen depression on one level you could say, oh, look, even if they're, you know, weirdos, they're trying to do something good about depression. I worry that they're actually just um, preying on uh, 
people with depression and, and giving them false hope and whatnot. So, well, look at this. You can understand the Bible. It's not that hard. It's dumb as shit. It's actually really easy. Ooh, did Jesus really exist? No. That was quick. The Bible, what is its message? That's a big question. Would you like to know the truth? Wow. No, I don't, I, in the words of Jack Nicholson, I don't think I can handle the truth. All right, I'm going to open um, uh, the second parcel from Toby. Ah, this is the bigger one as well. Here, what's in here? I'm going to have to send you back a package, I think, Toby. Mel, you're right. The answer to life, the universe, and everything is 42. The tricky bit is knowing what the question is. I guess. Ooh, King James Old Testament. That's a classy version. This is a proper version of King James. Holy Bible, New International Version. There, see, I don't trust these ones. Oh, so, wait, the preface. Who's this by? New International Version is a completely new translation. The Holy Bible, made by over 100 scholars, working directly from best available Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek texts. Started in 1965. So it's an evangelical translation. Not sure. Oh, look, here's the money shot, though. Uh, King James New Testament. But look, this is what we want to know the doctrines and covenants, the pearl of great price. I see gum bunny. I did not order all the religious tracks. Um, Toby's been sending them to me. Um, just to give us something fun to talk about in uh, the thing. Um, and you know, my soul clear, clear, geez, I clearly needs Jesus. Hey, Toby, what is this? A book for ants? I'm old with bad eyesight. I don't want to sound um, churlish. The Pearl of Great Ice. I love. Ooh, contains revelations given to Joseph Smith, the prophet, with some additions by his successors, the presidency of the church. Um, okay. Hmm. Wow, okay, this is interesting. Testimony of witnesses, testimony of the 12 apostles. And now, see, I'm Catholic. I thought I knew who um, uh, the 12 apostles were. But they're not who I thought. <clears throat> Testimony of the witnesses of the book of the Lord's commandments, which commandments he gave. <coughs> oh, my God. Uh, this is so bad, it's making me gag. It's making bile rise in the back of my throat. Testimony of the witnesses, book of the Lord's commandments, which commandments he gave to his church through Joseph Smith, Jr., who was appointed by the voice of church for his purpose. We, therefore, feel willing to bear testimony to the word of mankind, to every creature upon the face of the earth, that the Lord has borne record to our souls uh, through the Holy Ghost shed forth upon us, that these commandments were given by inspiration of God and are profitable for all men and are verily true. We give this testimony unto the word, the Lord being our helper, and is through the grace of God the Father, his Son, Jesus Christ, we are permitted to have this privilege of bearing his testimony unto the world in which we rejoice exceedingly, praying the Lord always that children of men have profited uh, thereby. Names of the 12. See, yeah, again, I went to Catholic school. I thought I knew who the 12 apostles were. But apparently the real 12 apostles were Thomas March, David Patton, Brigham Young. That's They have that university, don't they? Brigham Young University. Heber Kimball, Orson Hyde, William McKellen, Parley Pratt, must be Chris Pratt's ancestor, Luke Johnson, William Smith, Orson Pratt, John Boynton, Lyman Johnson. Those, I don't know, those, those are not the real 12 commandments. Mel, the Gospels in the Nag Hammadi Library, they're wild. Okay. Yes, I know, yeah, Toby, them and they've seen the gold plates.
This, this has got lots of footnotes. This is like half of every page is footnotes. Quite fascinating. Okay, I, a couple of thoughts just went through my head and um, I remembered something really funny. Um, or I find it funny anyway. I was thinking like, um, maybe if uh, I, I read this publicly, like on transport, I might be able to pick up a hot Mormon chick, you know, that that could work. Um, but then I actually remembered a friend of mine years ago. I don't know where he first met this girl. I think actually his sister, who was desperate for acceptance in some way, joined uh, this evangelical uh, Christian church. And um, she was living with her brother or staying with her brother. And um, she came around with this other girl from the church and she was quite cute um and um she decided that she was going to try and convert um my friend um and he had no interest in it whatsoever but he had a bit of an interest in her and um believe it or not this devout christian girl um used the oldest bait known to man and she believed she was doing the right thing by banging the dude she thought she would be uh saving his soul so this went on for a while with her shagging my friend and then saying you're going to come to church with me and went no nah, that's all stupid i'm not going there and she came oh but it's important to me and he goes not to me it's not and he never once pretended otherwise. Um, like, you know, she was like saying, oh, you know, I'll show you. And he would have sex. And and then she said, come to church. He's going, no, 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 that's not what this is about. And this went on for ages. Like, it was like weeks or months with her shagging him and then saying, come to church. And he's going, no, nah, no. Nah. And then one day she decided because, I don't know, how many times they'd had sex and she's going like and she said well if you won't uh come to church with me and uh, um i can't sort of be here anymore i i, I can't have sex with you and oh well fair enough it was a good run while it lasted and like she really thought if she threatened to cut him off she he would then go to the church and he just went no nah. And she's going, I mean it, I'm never coming back. And he's going, oh, well, you know. And she's doing this whole walking out the door now. I'm really, really going. And he's going, bye. And he's, he never pretended otherwise. It's like she said, you know, she, she could save him. And he said, no, you can't. And so she tried to lure him in with sex. And it didn't work. And, yes, Keiko, um, flirty fishing, um, fishing for Jesus. Children of God, they yeah, that cult had a thing here. And they would have very young girls in public places uh, who who would approach guys. I had them approach me once, but I knew who they were, and it was creepy as fuck because these girls were way too young, uh, maybe sixteen. They were way too young. It was creepy as hell, and I was just really glad I knew who they were. But this was one of the funnier things I saw. This girl thinking she turned my friend to Jesus with sex. And he kept telling her point blank, this is not going to happen, okay? If you're getting, you know, if you're going to have sex with me, yep, let's do it. But I, I just need to tell you, I'm not going to get converted, okay? And um, she thought he would, and he didn't. Uh, he stayed true to his word. But, yeah, when she actually left, that was the funniest bit. Like, uh, I'm really going out the door now. I won't come back. And he's like, bye. You know, oh, I thought we had something. He goes, yeah, you know, it was good while it lasted. But now you said church is involved, so I'm out. Sorry. Uh, Aussie Gun Bunny, they do. Like, it's super, super illegal, and they're a nasty cult. In Australia, they were called the family. Um. And they are dodgy as fuck. Um, oh, yeah, Toby, my mate was honest the whole time. He told her from the get-go 
no way am I going to your church. And when she was coming on to him, like, you know, we could get together if you're going to church. He straight up said, no, no, that's not going to happen. I'm never going to your church. And, but do you want to have sex with me? Yes. Yes, I do. You're kind of hot. All right. Let's have sex. Go to church after. No, I'm not going to church after. Oh, yes, you will. I think you will have sex. Go to church? No. And, you know, and then try to hold out next time and say, uh, uh, we can't have sex unless you go to church. Oh, well, guess we don't have sex. Oh, come on. We'll do it and then we'll go afterwards. No, I'm not going afterwards. And it, this dragged on for ages. It was super friggin' bizarre. It's the time, 9.20. I'm going to have a drink. I'm going to have another little drinky. It's a Thursday night. Uh, let's go. Uh, what can I have? What will I have? What's here? Is that, is that, is that? I know. I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have this one. I'm going to have uh, maple bacon. Mel, you were a Christian and you met your, your now husband, and he was an atheist, and suddenly you're both atheists. Um, well, interesting, my family has a history of uh, Catholic converts. Um, my grandparents, my mum's parents, uh, my grandfather was Catholic, and my grandmother, before they were married, wasn't. And back in those days, um, Catholics couldn't marry non-Catholics. Um, uh, so, you know, they didn't know what to do. But, you know, the priest who was uh, talking to us seemed pretty cool because apparently he just said, look, don't convert just because you think you want to get married, okay? That's, that's a bad idea. It's bad for you. It's bad for everyone. Like if we talk and you decide converting is for you, then that's good. But don't convert just to get married. That would be a bad idea. Um, and she did end up converting and marrying him. So, you know, I'm here. But the same thing with my mum, because being brought up there, was brought up Catholic, and my dad wasn't. Um, and, um, yeah, so he did the same thing. He converted in order to um, uh, uh, marry my mum. So there's a history of religious conversion in my family. I went the other way. I used to be like a, an altar boy and everything. Now I'm around today. Aussie Gun Bunny, you got to head off. Well, I hope uh, you enjoy work, my friend. Jerry, look, I, and here's the thing. While, while, I'm saying, while, while I'm by any sort of rational definition an atheist, I have no problem with anyone uh, having their own beliefs or seeing, you know, as you say, having had an experience or seeing a thing that um, keeps you interested in the possibility of a God or makes you believe in God. I'm fine with that. I only have a problem when I use that to attack other people as I've seen a few people say like saying uh, my religion my religion doesn't allow me to do this and I choose to follow that teaching that's completely fine your religion says don't drink alcohol and you're fine with that fine. where it's completely unacceptable is my religion says you're not allowed to do that so I'm gonna stop you or persecute you or kill you because of that that's unacceptable and I have no time for that. And also, it's one thing to not understand. Like like I was saying earlier, when you look at how amazingly complex life is, I can understand someone looking at that and going, wow, I don't understand how that could just happen. I believe that's God's design, God's plan. I can understand someone thinking that because the world's fucking amazing. Just, you know, from the weirdest thing, from insects all the way through, it was freaking amazing. And I can understand someone thinking that, but I don't countenance stopping thinking. It's like, because you don't understand it doesn't mean other people don't understand it. It doesn't mean other people shouldn't be questing for the answers. When people use religion to suppress 
knowledge or to suppress investigation, suppress science or suppress art, that's unacceptable. Is that Keiko? Craig Parker's explanation of religion. Of all the wonderful nativity stories, they're all insane. The weirdest thing I've ever heard, it's all one big accident. Well, accident's a very subjective word. But like I say, the scientists who investigate things like, you know, the Big Bang, the origin of the universe and the origin of life, they've actually got pretty compelling answers as to how things came to be. And this is the one thing I think, not the only, this is a thing that science has in common with religion. When you look at uh, the real bleeding edge of sciences, physics, mathematics, uh, there are things that defy normal human understanding. Like our concept of time, we only experience time as a linear thing, uh, but you listen to the scientists and they will tell you that they believe it's not linear. And, you know, we only are physically aware of the dimensions around us, but then you get uh, the people who talk about, you know, seven, eight, nine dimensions, and these are things like you can't represent them around you. Uh, yeah, Joe, share a link to a YouTube video if you like. So there are elements of science that go beyond our human experience. Um, and likewise with religions, they just go, there are things beyond humans. Why would God do these things? Well, God is unknowable. Um, God is mysterious, works in mysterious ways. But... Um, it's, you know, um, was the difference, the difference in those things uh, with science and religion, science keeps moving, science keeps trying to understand it, uh, whereas far too many religions shut down the lines of inquiry and say, here are the boundaries. You don't go beyond the boundaries. Uh, and that's why I favour the science side of things more. Oh, my God, Keo, that's the literal thing. That was official Catholic doctrine until quite recently. Like the Catholic Church prohibited uh, painkilling drugs in childbirth because women were supposed to be in pain um, because of the fall of Eve. There's, um, there's the actual, look, I'll... I'll I'll try and um, get the quote. Just a little Google search. Oh, look, here it is. It's in Genesis. Um, Woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain shall you bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. And that was taken literally for so long that not only did women experience child pain in childbirth, they had to experience child, childbirth pain. That was God's punishment. So, ah, oh, Joe, Brian Cox is cool. I like when he explains things. He has such a, a, a kind, warm voice. Um, and also, he used to be in a pop band, which is even better. Um, uh, I, I, I just think that's um, 
<laughs> I just think that's brilliant. Uh, that he's one of the world's leading scientists today, uh, uh, but he was in a pop band. Um, and you can still see him. You go on YouTube. Uh, the band was called D Ream, as in Dream. And um, their biggest hit was called Things Can Only Get Better. Every now and then I go and watch that on YouTube just to see uh, young pop star Brian Cox. It's awesome. Oh, Penny, that's an uh, interesting angle. Yeah, sometimes the thing about natural birth and no painkillers is nothing to do with religion. Some, some women just think the non-natural childbirth is inherently bad, uh, and so they went to uh, painkillers, which, I don't know, is all a bit much, um, not accepting the progression of medicine and all that. Oh, my God, speaking of that, did anyone ever uh, watch the series The Nick? They had two seasons. Um, it was a dramatisation of uh, the growth of... Uh, the Knickerbocker Hospital in New York at like the start of the 20th century. And it's when surgery was a big fucking experiment. Like basically, if you had something that we'd get even routine surgery on now, like a burst appendix, you would just die, you know. But if there was something wrong internally, there was no operation or whatever, you would just die. And so these doctors who decided to start playing God and um start cutting people open and trying to cut out bad things and stitch them up and whatnot uh they they were basically playing they were using patients as guinea pigs um but that's how medicine advanced that's how we have safe surgery now because these bloody cowboys uh were just experimenting on their patients they're all mad drug addicts too. Um, cocaine became a big thing in the late 19th century. Um, and it was very readily available and, um, and doctors particularly had access to it. And so they tended to be really big abusers of it. Hey, Mega Leach, how's it going? Um, uh, and there was, there was a funny plot turn when the, the, lead character um uh the doctor is a mad cocaine addict finally went into rehab because he was fucking himself up with his non-stop cocaine use um and they treated him with this fabulous new drug that wasn't dangerous like cocaine and wasn't uh addictive and had no negative side effects uh it was heroin. Heroin was uh, a wonder drug at first. And that, that is probably a good way to get off cocaine, to just be dosed up on heroin for a couple of weeks. Um, and you'll forget all about cocaine at that point. But um, but yeah, if you've never watched it, it's an interesting series. There's two to see, down, download that is almost there. Okay, Toby, I'll catch you later. Bye. Um, thank you for all the books. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so if you've never watched The Nick, I think it's worth watching. It's quite an interesting show. Oh, yeah, David, anesthetics. Even They didn't know what dose to use anesthetics in. That was all experimentation. Um, at least you'd die happy if they dose you out on an anesthetic. But yeah. I tell you what, Keiko, if I was at the front lines, World War One, a hamper of cocaine and heroin would be just what I was after. I, I would be all for that. Um, and the freezing in the mud in Flanders. I'm like, oh, never mind. Cocaine from home has arrived. Suddenly, everything is better. Or at least there are colours in it now.
Yeah, look, before anesthetics, as you're saying, David Emil, um, that's why uh, people would die of shock. Um, like you, all the famous battlefields, it's like, because there's no antibiotics, there's no infection treatment. Um, you, you know, in, in wars, someone got shot through the leg. Uh, if it did a lot of damage, it's like, okay, that's going to get infected, they're going to die. Let's cut their leg off. Um, oh, we don't have anesthetic. It's just saw the leg. Oh, oh my God. The horror of it is just, whoa. Oh, I like that, Dave. That's a little typo or an autocorrect. You didn't say life before um, anesthetics would have sucked. You said life before aesthetics would have sucked. And honestly, I think that's true as well. Keke, you've got to teach a lesson. Have a good day. Thank you for dropping by. Oh, Penny, yeah, look, I, I'm totally down with living now 100 years ago. Um, yeah, no, no, no. The poor going into shock, not good, Joe. Um, I don't think I ever have. Uh, I think that the closest I would have come to going into shock, and I don't think I really did, a couple of injuries there. I don't know if you can see that the end of that finger is crooked. Um, it got... Yeah, if I do it that way, you can probably see that it's crooked. It got smashed by a cricket ball at school, uh, trying to do a hook shot on a fast bowler, and I wasn't wearing gloves. And it, and it just glance at, and it, literally, I saw the X-ray. The bone was in fragments. And they didn't set it properly, so it's crooked now. And I kind of staggered. Um, it hit my hand, and I was like, oh, oh, blah, 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 and I felt sick and couldn't stand up properly. I don't think I was in shock though. And um, uh, and I got hit in the head with a discus when I was at school. Um, and I don't think I really went into shock with that either, but it was a bit weird. Um, probably just mild concussion. No, I don't make you If I want to do the finger, like, okay, you know if you do hurt a fingertip, um, that's why you have a sling, because if... It hangs down. You know, you know the throbbing you get? Well, that's what I had when this finger smashed. And it was all bandaged up really thickly. Um, and so that finger was sticking out from my hand normally. And to stop it from throbbing, I was holding So I, I was walking around like this at school. Um, and so the other guys were getting me to walk up to teachers and just talk to the principal and say hello because it meant I was walking up to the principal and going, Hi, Mr. Malone, how are you? And they just thought it was hilarious. Um, I could get away with just walking around doing this. <laughs> so, Joe, you get, you get stuff sent you into shock. Um, AZ has a problem with seizures. Uh, I don't think they're as bad lately, but it, like, yeah, because he, he, can't, he can't drive because he's too high a risk of having a seizure. Um, as I've, I've been with him when he's had seizures um, and they're not good and some last longer. Though. Sometimes he'll black out for really long times. It might be anywhere from seconds to minutes. Uh, and uh, even if he doesn't lose consciousness in, in them, even if he doesn't fall down, uh, uh, he loses track. Hey, Mel, thank you um, for dropping by. Nice to see you. Uh, yeah, no, that, that that is not good, Joe, the shock and the passing out. Uh, I hope it doesn't happen to you too often. That's that's just unpleasant. So, oh, dear. No, AZ is very special. I don't know that anyone could ever trade places with him, Joe. I do really love, now I have a book called The Pearl of Great, Great Price. I do like this one. Oh, I see. The King James versions, they were also printed by the Mormons. This is also, Toby's just gone to the Mormon missionaries and it's, give me all your free shit now. And so, if someone got in my house now, they'd think I was a religious nut. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. I don't have any serious health problems. Um, I had ear problems 
well, it's good. So I'm, I'm half deaf in this ear. I had to have major surgery on that ear a couple of times, perforated eardrums and whatnot. And so I literally am half deaf in that ear. So if someone is trying to talk to me and they're on that side of me and they're not facing me or they're not speaking clearly, I have to tell them, like, uh, if you're going to talk to me, you have to face me and speak clearly. If you're on that side, I won't hear you properly otherwise. I will just get annoyed with you. Yes, Joe, give us some example of a time you fainted. Um, not because um, uh, uh, I want to do anything bad. I'm, I'm actually just very interested in the scenario. And while you're writing that, I'll give you an example of when AZ made someone else faint. Um, AZ knows a lot of comedians, and some of them are quite famous. One of them who's now got a show on the ABC sporting show, Tegan Hickenbotham. Uh, as she's an awesome person, she's very funny. She's very funny, but she was at AIDS' house once after he had his very, 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 very big sickness and um, with all the infections and whatnot. And he had a few people around and Tegan was one of them. And he was telling them in graphic detail exactly how bad the infection was and the things that happened and the scrapings and the grossness and the this and the that. And Tegan just went... <laughs> just from his description. So that's how gross what actually happened to AIDS is. He's made people faint just by describing what happened to him. Oh my gosh, Joe, you had a gut cramp after a difficult toilet experience. We've all been there, buddy. Got up to wash your hands, woke on the floor with half the stuff in the room on top. All right, you can see what happened there. You've you've started to faint and you've stumbled and um, you've pulled stuff. You've tried to grab and you pulled stuff on top of yourself. You haven't just gone down suddenly. You've gone, whoa, 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 and pulled everything down. Are you fainted while having a blood test, Sebastian? I haven't fainted when I had a blood test. But I think I nearly did, and I swear to God, and I'm you know, okay. I'm old now, so I get to say everyone's too young, like cops are too young and whatnot. But this, I was only in my twenties, and I had to have a blood test. And I swear the guy taking it, I don't know if he's an intern or a nurse, uh, but I swear he was fifteen, and he's a skinny guy wearing this smock that's way too big for him. Anyway, he had no bedside manner, and he's taking blood, and I started to go, I started to go, oh, okay. And it was a psychological thing. I, I feel like my brain's being sucked out of my head, down this, out my arm in this tube. And I was just going, whoa, whoa. And I was saying to the guy, oh, man, should it feel like my brain's getting sucked out my arm? This is not right. And he didn't say anything. He didn't do anything reassuring. He was bloody useless. So I didn't actually faint, but I don't think I was very far off it. You know what I think? Oh, one time I didn't faint, but uh, it's pretty full on. Um, I was playing football, Aussie rules football. Um, I was only young, I was still at school, and um, it was it was just a social game. We were playing with guys from another town, in a social game, and it happened right on quarter times. Like um, there's a, a, you know, I'm 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 in the tree. I'm going, I'm saying to the guys running with the ball. Over here, I'm clear, I'm clear. Because I was yelling, I'm clear, I'm clear. Someone who was about, I don't know, 30 metres away um, saw it and started running straight for me so I wouldn't be in the clear anymore. And I'm yelling to the bloke with the ball who's trying to get around someone, I'm clear, I'm clear. He thought he was a hero and was going to get around the bloke who was stopping him and he didn't pass it to me. And I'm going, I'm clear, I'm clear. And he took way too long. And I didn't even see this guy who was running straight towards me. Um, and he finally kicked it to me, and it was a slow little kick, but it went straight to me. I was like, in terms of going straight to me, it was really good. But I did, and so this guy's running full speed at me. I'm standing completely still because I didn't have to move for this ball. And I'm going, la, 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 la. and then as it comes down, I just jumped, not high, I didn't have to jump, jump high to get it on my chest to make sure I got it. And I just, like, my feet just left the ground and peripheral vision. I saw this guy running at me, and I sort of went, what now? 
And then he leapt at me to try and spoil the tape. And his shoulder hit me in the mouth and his elbow hit me in the throat. Not on purpose. He wasn't trying to hurt me. That's just how these things go. His elbow hurt me in the throat. There's the thing. When I've been hit in the throat, it makes me vomit. And um, I, I had that I happen a couple times. And so this guy smashed me in the mouth and hit me in the throat. And he's picked me up because there's a social game and the bloody fucking quarter time whistle went. And so I'm staggering off the field and I'm bleeding because he smashed me in the mouth. And um, and I, I, I've got to get off the field. I'm staggering to the field and there's the key and team, the players' wives and mothers were in. And they had the you know, 44 gallon drum as a bin out the front. And as I walked off the field, I knew I was going to throw up. And apparently I was white as a sheet. And that made the blood running out of my mouth stand out even more. So it's like white as a sheet, this big spray of red down here. And people kept saying as I was walking off the field, vacant, glassy eyed, oh, are you okay? Oh, don't stop me. Don't stop me. So I knew I was going to throw up. And don't stop me. Don't stop me. And. <laughs> And I staggered up to this 44-gallon drum that was in front of the canteen, and the ladies in the canteen said, "Good, you look terrible. Are you okay?" And I, went, Look. And I just went, "Wow!" And they threw up because there was blood in it because my mouth was cut. And they were like, "Oh, thanks for that. That's going to do wonders for the sausage roll sales." I like that, Nick. You were editing on the other monitor, and I was on mute. Or you can see me waving my arms, saying, "Pay attention to me. Pay attention to me." That's what I'm like. Mike, you are late. I am not going to... You're late. I didn't really mean to threaten you with a knife then. It was just there. I, I was using this to open mail earlier. So, but, you know, don't, don't, don't. Don't push me, man. Um, yes. So I am trying to desperately get attention. Oh, sorry. I did a story about sharp knives. Um, I make sandwiches at work and I get this uh, baguette from a, a, a roadside store from this bakery that runs it and they, they make really nice sourdough baguettes they're also really crusty that yum 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 and I I, I made sure because you can never get a sharp knife away. I don't know if anyone else here works in an office but it's really hard to get you, you always run out of forks spoons and you can never get a sharp knife so I got my own sharp knife like I just went to the supermarket and got one um, or it was like a big W or something uh, in the city. I got one and I keep it in my drawer so I, I can always cut my bread. I always had a sharp knife if I needed. And I just got distracted one day and I was cutting the baguette like in half, like, as in, yeah, whatever, guess, like this stuff. I cut it in half and then cut that bit down the middle so I have like a sandwich. And I was just, I was holding the baguette and I'm going, and I wasn't concentrating, and it went one slice deeper than I was planning to, and the knife went right across the top of that finger, and I felt it and went, "That ain't right." But it was just like, and it wasn't. It wasn't really painful, but it was just like, "Oh, that's not right. That that is really not right." And then I looked, and I cut down quite deep on the finger but because the knife was so sharp it was a really clean cut and i just kind of went ah 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 and i'm like running it under a tap and it's just fucking blood i'm just going oh this blood is not gonna stop and i like a paper towel on it it's just bleeding through there's a little first aid kit there next to the kitchen and i'm trying to put band-aids on it and band-aids didn't stand a chance. Hey, Penny, thanks for dropping by. I'm probably going to be gone soon too. Um, Band-Aids were just useless. And I know it was quite early in the morning. Most people weren't in yet. And I must have been in the kitchen going, ah, 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 ah. And someone heard me and it happened to be a guy who, you know, he's like the first date officer for Laurie's going, what's happened? And I'm just standing there with blood pissing down my head. Well, you know, the, and, um, and so he got into the first aid kit and got some actual bandages and bandages not to stop. I probably should have got stitches, but there's, there's not even, you wouldn't see it. This is too low res anyway. But there isn't even a scar on there now because the cut was so clean, um, even without stitches. Um, 
there's no scar. Although the, the next day I, I kept thinking I should have gone to casualty and got stitches and I didn't. And the next day, like I got out, went in the shower and I thought I was okay, but then I bumped it and it started bleeding again. And this is like 24 hours later. And I just went, okay, bleeding again 24 hours later, that's not good. Um, and I happened, the, the route I took to work in those days, I went right by a hospital. So I just got off the tram when <laughs> I got off the tram when it went back to the hospital and, said, and I explained. And they said, like, oh, this much later, we're not going to do uh, stitches. But they, they cleaned it up and put little butterfly band-aids on it. And I was fine. And I don't even have a scar there now. Um, <laughs> Mike, maybe, maybe Mike, I might. Joe, you don't know me, man. I might, I might. I know, like, Debbie, you're right. A little bit of what it looks like leaders, like, obviously it's not that much. I just cut the top of my finger. I'm not going to bleed to death by, I mean, you cut your finger off and you're not going to bleed to death. <laughs> but it was just like fucking blood. <laughs> so much blood was running on. So I love doing that. You don't know me, jokes. I don't know if anyone saw I posted a picture on Facebook and Twitter, and it seemed quite popular. Um, and it was from a few weeks ago, but I only just posted it this week. Um, when I was at VidCon, I saw some animal rights type had chalked all this um, uh, graffiti around it. Uh, you know, animal rights stuff. And there's one they put along one wall. If you had to suck the milk from the cow's tit, you'd drink almond milk. And I just posed pulling a face next to this and I wrote the caption, stupid animal rights types. You don't know what I'd do to a cow's tits if I had the ch chance. You don't know me at all. It, it just, it always cracks me up how uh, PETA types and animal liberation types think everyone shares their concern. It's not that their concerns are wrong. Animals are treated extraordinarily badly, uh, obviously in abattoirs where they're killed, um, but also in the dairy industry, animals are treated really badly. I mean, like I saw one again the other day, it's like some cow trussed up um, with the slogan, is treating someone like this really worth a $5 meal? Okay, A, something, not someone. B, yes, totally worth it. Fuck that cow. <laughs> it's like when the vegans try to use really emotive language against meat eaters, thinking that will change the mind of meat eaters, and meat eaters are just like, no, man, I don't give a fuck. I I, I just don't care. I really don't care. I had the best hamburger for dinner tonight from a place called Chang's. This is truffle uh, uh, burger, like beef burger with truffle oil and parmesan cheese. Fuck, it was good. <laughs> Celtic, you want to watch me suck cow sticks? I'll have to take my camera to a farm one day. I don't do that. Yeah, anyway, look. Um, I am going to go. Thank you all so much for dropping by. As per usual, had a lot of fun. Um, so I, I hope you did too. Um, <laughs> I've got so many. Really, I said if someone sent me this, I've got like the Quran and a King James New Testament and a King James Old Testament. And now I've got the Mormon Doctrines and Covenants, Pearl of Great Price. I, uh, I really should read them. They're just really boring. I tried to read them. And they're really boring. And this awesome one Toby sent me, but the, the the font is really tiny. What is this? A book for ants? Not like an old man with bad eyesight. I can't read it. Until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he said by his servants, the prophets, so was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria until this day. Hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you, everyone. You throw me the old thumbs up on the YouTube thing. We'll fool the YouTube algorithm into thinking I'm really popular. Um, but thank you so much for joining in. I'm going to keep trying to do 
videos every day in October, video videos. Some will be live streams like this. Most will be pre-recorded. Um, we'll see what I do tomorrow. Uh, either pre-recorded or another live stream. It's Friday. I mean, I had a drink. Do I have two drinks? Two drinks? Be a really shit face tomorrow because it's Friday. I have to go to work tomorrow. Tomorrow night, nothing can hold me back. Who knows? Um, Oh, Joe, if you ever get to Melbourne, hit me up, man. Definitely. I always like catching up with people. So fairly well, fine people. I hope you had a good time, and I hope to see you again soon.